Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Lip Long Options. Uh, my name is Barbara Armstrong. I have the privilege of filling in for Connie Hill this afternoon, um, but not to worry. She will be back uh, for her class tomorrow. So um, today, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about long calls and we're going to talk about buying a call with a short-term exit. And we're going to look specifically at two types of trades. We're going to look at uh, swing trades where we're trading back up to a previous higher. That's the goal. You never know if it's going to get there or not. And then we're going to look at a one ATR trade. And if you're not sure of what one ATR is, don't worry about it. We're gonna talk about that. And we're going to look at one when one might choose one type of target over the other. So that is what is on the menu for today. I'm glad that you have all decided to uh, join us. We've got a bunch of people here live. So hello to Randy and Krishna and AP514 and Carol and Kevin and Life in the Fast Lane. I love all these handles and AJ and Ricebird and the rest of the gang. We also have Kevin Cameron May here with us in the chat. He's a friend and a fellow coach. He understands this, these strategies backwards and forwards. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you're watching this in the archives, as the majority of people do, you can type your questions or comments in down below. And I do look at those on a daily basis and I'll get back to you quickly. The third way that Cameron and I can communicate with you outside of webcasts like this and that you can communicate with us is through the land of X. And with X, um, you know, formerly known as Twitter, um, we're posting content there on a daily basis that we think you'll find informative and helpful. Uh, my handle, Barbara Armstrong CS, Cameron's Cameron May CS. So um, let's get through our important information so we can um, get out to the platform. Know that options carry a high level of risk and aren't suitable for all investors. We're buying calls today. So when we buy a call, how much could we lose? the entire amount that we paid to get into the trade, 100%. So, you know, that would be considered high risk, correct? Correct. Um, and know that um, you have to meet certain requirements in order to trade options through Schwab and you have to apply for option trading privileges. So I, you know, know in the past there have been clients who have practiced a strategy in paper money for months and months and then gone to place their first live trade and it didn't go in. Uh, because they didn't have option trading privileges in their live account. So I'd hate for that to happen to you. So just fair warning. Um, the paper money platform is what we use in this class. It is a brilliant place to become familiar with the thinkorswim platform. Looks like, smells like, feels like real money, but it isn't. And so, you know, if you make a mistake, no harm, no foul. Mind you, if you make a ton of money, you know, it's paper a paper money gain. You could go out and buy yourself a paper money bottle of champagne or, you know, a paper money vehicle or whatever, pay some paper money bills. Um, yeah, so, but it's a great place to learn. There are a few nuances and differences. Um, you know, one is that, you know, short options will never be assigned early um, in paper money, but that can happen in a live account. Know that all investing involves risk, including the risk of loss. So what we're going to do today, we're going to go out, have a look at what's happening in the market in general. We're going to do a quick overview. And I know that many of you attend multiple classes throughout a day, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. And then we're going to get right to our topic today, which is um, long calls with short term targets or buying calls with a short term uh, view or target in place. So let's come out and start with. Well, we could start with the Dow. I usually start with the S&P, but we have the Dow up, um, you know, and we've had some consolidation after a really, you know, pretty dramatic run to the upside from the end of October. You know, so it, it was up 23%. We've given a little bit of that back. It's now, you know, we're up 19% um, in about six months. So, you know, that's a pr pretty significant uptrend. And like I said, we've just seen some consolidation and it's come back to this uh, previous support level around 385 and that appears to be holding so far. So we'll see, you know, how that plays out. When we look at the S&P, pretty similar, right? You know, we've had this dramatic move to the upside, you know, up 
what, 20, almost 27% since the end of October. Um, and, you know, really that's five and a half months. So that's quite extraordinary. And it's come back to this 30 day moving average that it's come to, you know, a couple of times before. And, um, and that 30 day moving average appears to be holding. So, you know, not far off the all time highs for this index up 9% year to date. Now, how about our NASDAQ? That's our tech heavy index. Um, and, you know, there are no financials as part of this index. And, you know, once again, this may not look as dramatic, and yet this one is up the most since the end of, uh, of October, um, up 30%. And again, you know, within a stone's throw of all time highs, and just, you know, in this last, I would say, you know, through the month of March, it's really been consolidating. Now, having said that, it did hit an, a new all time intraday high here on the 21st, um, but yeah, pretty strong. And, you know, today up almost 2%, up 1.7%. And this is still a live candle. So who knows where we'll be at the end of the day, but pretty bullish. Um, and then how about our small caps? God bless their little hearts. Because they've been in this big, fat range for the last two years, where the ceiling was somewhere between 2000 and 2020. And then we kind of had a bit of a fake out here. And then we had another little fake out. And then third times the charm, it looked like this old resistance had become new support. And yesterday it came right down. And the question yesterday was, is this 2020 neighborhood of support going to hold? And now today we have a Harami pattern, which is a candle pattern where today's candle is inside the body of yesterday's candle. And at a support level, that's considered to be bullish. So th these don't always work out, but you know, like here we had the same pattern here and then it was like, oh, you thought that man support was holding? Yeah, fake out. And, but you know, six days later it was back above. So, you know, kind of temporary fake out maybe. So, you know, there are no guarantees. And how about our volatility? Yesterday we had a big move uh, to the upside. Today it's down, you know, about 5%. You know, and at 15, it's kind of been in this in this range, but you know, this is actually a little higher than it's been for most of the last six months. And so that might mean there are some selling opportunities, you know, where there might be a little more premium and we're heading into earnings season again. Like it just seemed like we barely finished, uh, but that's where we are. So, you know, but this, it, there may be some selling opportunities, um, but you know, uh, this is a long call class. So we're looking at buying buying things in this class, okay? Okie dokie. Well, let's go and look at Disney. So Disney's been in the news today. And why has Disney been in the news? Well, Disney's been in the news because JP Morgan just raised their price target on Disney from 120, which is kind of right around here, to 140. You know, like that's a pretty big move. You know, so... So they've gone from 120 to 140. And so here's an opportunity where we have a stock on the last earnings. And I mean, we have earnings coming up again. Um, but, you know, last earnings, it gapped up. We had a one day pullback, came back to this support level again. Ooh. Excuse me. Um, and, and, you know, it's been moving quite nicely to the upside and along with the rest of the market we just had a bit of a pullback and it looks to be bouncing off this 30-day moving average so could we do a one atr trade and what is a one atr trade well what is the atr on this right now it's 235 which means in an average day over the last 14 days why 14 uh, it says 14 right there this is a, the average range that this stock has moved in. So if we wanted to be conservative, it's sitting at 118. We could say, you know, if we look at today's high, and let's say it's around 118, if we added 235 to that, you know, around just over 120, we could get, consider that a win and get out. Um, or we could kind of do a swing trade. And with a swing trade, you're buying a call option and the goal is just to trade it until it gets back to the previous high. 
And so I thought this might be a good example of a swing trade. And of course, you know, we could do two trades, um, but but I have another stock for us to do a, a one ATR trade on. And so, you know, we look at, we could do either one. Now, earnings is approaching with both of these strategies, the goal might be to be out prior to earnings. Now, the last couple of earnings, you know, for we had one where it gapped down, this it moved up, moved up, and this was a pretty dramatic gap up, but there's no guarantee. We've seen it in the last year, both gap up and down. So you might say, well, whatever happens, I my goal is to exit this position prior to earnings. So it's a good idea to know when earnings is, isn't it? So if we come and hover over this, it will come up on a engine. Yeah, May 7th. Okay, so our expiration date on this, and I often will put our trades on the chart, but this one is now done. So we're gonna remove that. For some reason, I had it in there twice. There we go. Okay, so we're going to make, and and here, even though it went up to 123.74, what it, this day it went up to 122.82. This day it went up to 123.69. Let's just make our target here 123. And with a swing trade, what some traders will do, their example trading plan will say, hey, I, here's my target 123. And we could draw that on the chart if we wanted. Um, and, but if this option loses half its value, it's not going in the right direction. So I'd like to exit the position if, um, this, and that would be our stop. Okay. Now, is there a guarantee that we get out at exactly the price we're requesting? No. So this is our swing target. Now, it, you know, if we weren't comfortable trading options, could we do this by buying the stock? Sure. But, you know, this is an options class. And so, you know, we're looking at buying a long call here. So if we come out to May and you might say, well, Barb, if we only want to be in this for five or six days, maybe, or maybe a week, um, we want to be out by the 25th um, before earnings, why would I come out so far? And it's because of time decay. So if I bring up, I choose one that has time decay in it here, we can see that our theta, if we look at our at the money uh, strike, is about seven cents a day. Um, and, and so this, even if the price stays the same, time decay is working against us, right? If we looked at something that had just 15 days to expiration, that's another, you know, penny a day we're losing. And then as we get closer to expiration, so we're going to pay a little more for this option, but then time decay is going to be a little less troubling. And then when we go to sell it, the expectation is that we can sell it for a higher amount because it still has more um, it, it, time value in it. And so we're looking to buy how many of these? We would buy one if we were in our smaller account. And if you want to follow up on this with me, I do teach a trading a smaller account on Fridays and Mondays at high noon. So you are welcome to uh, follow up on these. And actually with this one, we're going to buy custom because we're putting in both a target. Our target is going to be that 130, I think it was 134. Uh, 123. Sorry, I'll write this down. Got a great memory, but it's short. Okay, 123. So our target, we don't know exactly what this is going to be worth, what the option is going to be worth when it gets to 123, because we don't know when we're going to hit that target or if we're going to hit that target. But if and when Disney goes at or above 123, we would like to exit this position. 
And then if it loses half its value, if it gets to the point where it's only worth, say, $2, not going in the right direction, we would like to exit. Okay, confirm and send. And we're going to put this in our long call group on the monitor tab. And we're going to make a note here that this is a swing trade. Now, how do we manage this, you know, in between? You know, what if it starts going sideways? Well, one of our rules might be if it doesn't go half the distance in half the time we, we'd like to exit, or if we have a couple of down days in a row, we might choose to exit. We don't have to wait until we've, we're down 50%. And how much could we lose? We could lose 400. Now it's saying our max profit is infinite because there's no cap on how high it could go, but we're, we're putting our own cap on it. We're saying, hey, if this goes up by about $5, we would like to exit, okay? Now, if you're wondering, you're saying, well, geez, I wonder what that might be worth. If you wanna get a ballpark on that, you're gonna have to, do a little bit of guessing, um, it, but we can come to Theo Price here. So you're on the trade tab and you'd come to Theo Price and then you see when you choose Theo Price, it gives us this little extra box. The first thing we do is hit reset and then we're going to come out here and let's see if we come to the charts and we say, well, it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days to come down. What if this is day one? What if it takes seven trading more trading days to go up? So we're going to come back here and say, okay, so seven more days would be, let's say next uh, Friday, the 19th. So let's just, and we're just guessing that this would be our expiration date. We aren't going to change volatility, although as it approaches earnings, volatility does tend to go up, doesn't it? So, you know, if we wanted, we could say, what if volatility went up a couple of percentage points? But if let's just leave it as, as a price thing. And then we're going to have the price go up by $5. That would get us to our 123. And then when we come back and we look at our option here, we can see, and we are out here in May, that we paid $4 for this it might be worth somewhere in the neighborhood of six. So that would be a 50% gain. Not bad for a, a trade that you would be in for, you know, in this hypothetical case, a week. Okay, so Carol, you're saying, how would you decide, there's a question in the chat, how would you decide whether you would wanna put on a swing trade or a one ATR trade, or is it just personal preference? Well, First of all, there is a potential swing target here. So a swing trade is a possibility. Um, now, if you're saying earnings is coming up, so I'd rather be in and out faster, this is likely to take longer. Excuse me. Um, so uh, to, to achieve the swing target than a 1ATR target, so I'd rather be in and out faster. So to some degree, it's personal preference. But if we come and we look at Amazon, for example, and Amazon is hitting a new all-time high today. So there isn't a swing target choice on the menu because there's nothing for it to swing to. You know, it's hitting a new all-time high. And so you might say, well, you know, geez Louise, like why would I buy something hitting an all-time high? Well, the idea here. Um, and this is obviously a, a stock that we have traded pretty frequently. Um, the idea is that, you know, you're going to buy high and sell higher. So, you know, it's been kind of consolidating here. Um, although it has, it, we had one down day and the, then it was still up um, each day following the last four days. But it seems to have, you know, taken a bigger move today up 1.83%. So if we were bullish on this, could we do a 1 ATR on this one if we expected the uptrend to continue? And we could. And so how would we calculate that? Well, this average true range, and if you don't have it on your chart, you can just come to studies 
edit studies, and then type in ATR. It's right at the top of the list. And then add selected and, you know, Bob's your uncle. So now you, you would have that on your chart. So we're going to come over here to our scratch pad. And we did. Oh, actually, you know what? We did one on Amazon yesterday. So let's see how that one's working out. And maybe we'll do one on a, a different stock instead. Um, so we can close these. It's not what we're doing today. Short call verticals, we can close those. Here's our long call. Well, it must have hit our target. So I don't see it in here. So then let's go ahead and we'll do a long call on Amazon. So our target today, this one could have been, a, oh, you know what? That was a long time ago. Okay, here we are. So we did do a one ATR trade um, yesterday. It's on something else. One TR and we're doing Amazon. And our one ATR on this is, and it will say right here, you know, what the current ATR is, it's 349. So we're gonna type in 349. And our target is going to be today's high, 189.56 plus 349. So 189.56 plus 349, that's 193.05. And if the trade goes against us, now are we expecting it to go against us? No, but like, you know, the, I was a girl, a Girl Scout or a Girl Guide. I grew up in Canada. You know, the motto is be prepared. 185.51. So we'll take today's low. So we're, we wouldn't place the trade if we thought it was going to go against us, but we know that in spite of our superb technical analysis, that possibility always exists. So we take 185, oh no, sorry. Yeah, no, this is right. Sorry, I'm thinking swing trade and going, oh, we don't have to do this one. 185, 51 minus 349, 182.02. Okay, and if we wanted to put this on our chart so we could see it, we can just kind of draw this line. And then, you know, when you're looking at these positions daily, which you will be doing, you know, if you place this in your paper money account, um, 193.05, this is our one ATR target. And thank you for checking my math. AP uh, 514 is my backup on the math. And he sets me straight when I make a mistake. And I, um, I I really appreciate that. Okay, so then how do we put this trade in? And if you want, you can put your exit in as well. And with this strategy, with our example trading plan, we go in at the end of each day. And so at the end of the day tomorrow, if it hasn't hit the target, we're going to go in and move the stop up to a dollar below the low of the day. Because this is when we have the most risk is when we enter the trade. Okay, and the intention is to be out prior to earnings. Okay, so we're gonna to come to the trade tab. Now with this one, if we come out to May, in our small account, our max risk is um, $500. So we couldn't buy a call out this far. We'd have to buy like the, the two strikes out of the money to be in our, in our, uh, range and and what does that do for us? Well, it makes it less. Well, I'm I'm not going to say it, it doesn't take away all our profit, but when we look at delta, delta tells us. And here's our delta over here. Actually, let me just come back to my basic here. So when I look at delta, if we buy the at the money strike, it, if the stock goes up a dollar, then we benefit by 53 cents in that this option will go up by 53 cents. 
if we buy this 200 option, we're spending less money, but it goes up by 35 cents, not 53 cents. But let's say this was the only account you had and you wanted to honor your position sizing rules. You don't want to risk losing 865 to $70. You might say, well, I'm going to buy this option because this is what I can afford. And better, a 35 cent gain for every dollar it moves up than no gain at all. And again, if it goes up by 350 and we make, you know, let's say a dollar 15 on a 450 investment, that's about 30%, isn't it? And that's about, you know, the range that we expect 25 to a 40% gain on these. And, and these are very short term. To be in this for a week would be a long time. So I, I can't remember the last time we bought a strike. Um, out of the money to this is so this is in the money at the money out of the money so this is two strikes out of the money but we're doing this for a very specific reason and we're going buy and we're going buy single now we could put it in as a buy oco this is just a different way of putting in an oco order on the thinkorswim platform so we're coming to advanced order we're changing it to first trigger sequence right click we're creating an opposite order to exit this position and we're going to make it a market order that's good till canceled and then we're coming to our sprocket which brings up a conditional order entry we're going to say we want to exit amazon when we go at or above 193.05 or if we go below 182.02. Okay. And then you may want to double check just down here. 193.05, 182.02, check and check. And where's the stock currently trading 189 that's above that's below okay so we're good to go and then confirm and send how many contracts we're just doing one and then we may want to put in a note here this is going in our long auction our long call group and we're going to say we chose the second strike out of the money due to cost of the option and then right at the front we're going to put that this is a one atr target and exit this is just a note from us to us no one else sees this this is just for us and you know when i first put these in i thought well like once i put this in like where can i see it um once it goes in and you can see it a number of different places. One, um, and, and I did a little mini session on notes. So up here, you can see this order was filled. So if we click on this little envelope, it tells us that Disney's a swing trade. And that it, here's our note for Amazon. Okay. We could also, if we wanted, we could come in here and say we would like to add notes and we and we did that see we have notes in here just type in notes and you can add it so we can have a note in here also which oh this is an alert on amazon so we have a short put vertical on that or we did have at one point so you know it, it will show us our notes here as well Okay, and then if we come up to working orders and we look at Amazon, there's a note here and it shows up here as well. So there's lots of places we can see them once we put them in. Okay, let's go and look now at Micron. It's a tech stock. Now, here's another one. So our ATR on this is what? 
$5.12. It's currently trading at 126.90. So we could do a swing trade and say, you know, we just want to trade it back to 130.54. So that's a possibility. Or we could do a one ATR trade. And in this case, you know, if, if we take the current price and we did the one ATR, on micron, yeah, that's 507. And the, you know, the price today is at 127. So our target would be 127 even plus 507. So that would be higher than the previous high. So again, this is kind of personal preference. You could say, well, I'd still like to do the swing target. And, and, you know, that's absolutely legit. You can do that. Or you could say, you know, I'm going to be a little more aggressive because, you know, it just recently gapped up on earnings. It's been on a roll. You know, we have a nice bull flag pattern setting up here. You know, we're, and if you wanted to do, you know, we could do a bull flag target as well. If you were really bullish, that would be the most bullish of the three. So it would kind of be a swing target. In this case, would be the most conservative. Yeah, we could do a one ATR target or a flag target where we'd measure the length of the flagpole. And, you know, to do that, we come up here. Oh, let me just close my drawing tools. And, and how long is this flag? All kind of from here to here. $38. And then we would duplicate that. Say, if I add $38 to the bottom of this, oops, I didn't do a very good job on moving that. You could also just do the math. You know, if we hover over this candle, say, well, our the bottom of that candle is about 120. So our target would be around 158. But we'd have to give that a little more time. Or, or some might say you might prefer to give it a little more time. So if you wanted, um, you know, we could do an, a one ATR trade on this, and then we could do a longer term trade, you know, but we'd, we'd have to go out a little further. And I don't know if in our small account, we could afford that, um, but let's go and look. So if we come out to May and we're doing the one ATR, that's kind of right in the neighborhood of what we can afford. So we could do that. So let's put that one on. So if we come to our chart and we say, well, what's today's low is 127.11, then when would we exit? We'd exit if we got to, no, nope, that was our high. Our low is 122.08, 122.08 minus 507. One twenty two oh eight minus five oh seven. So that's one seventeen oh one. Okay, so we're going to come to our trade tab. And again, you know, does it trade more than a million shares a day? Yes. Does it have tons of volume? Yes. Do we have a tight bid ass spread? It's a nickel. Five cents. So that's like 1% on a $5 option. So, yes. So, buy again, we're buying a single. And to put in our OCO order, we come to advanced order, first trigger sequence, right click, opposite order. And we're going to make this a market order. That's good till canceled. Hit our sprocket, bring up our conditional entry panel 
If it goes at or above, we always put the target in first. Do you have to? No, you can do it however you like. But, you know, I think when you have a, a routine, if you trade relatively frequently and you do things in the same exact order every time, I think your error rate you might find to be a little lower, given we're all human beings and have been known to make errors on occasion. Okay. It's, yeah, 132.07, 117.01. And we can check both here. So we want that to be greater, that to be less than. It's trading at 127. That's above, that's below. Looks good. Confirm and send. So, and again, if you want to see what neighborhood of return you might be able to achieve on this, you could go to that Theo price calculator, and that will give you an estimate. Again, it is an estimate. It is not a guarantee. So we're going to put that in our long call group and send it in. And again, you know, not a guarantee. It could gap up or down, and we could end up out at a higher or a lower price, right, than this. So there we go. Now. We don't have much time left, but we have done, actually we've done quite a bit. You know, we have put in an order on um, Micron. Oh, this is over in the other account. Uh, you know what, I'll put this on in the other account when this class ends. That's why I wasn't finding these. And we did a position on Disney and a position on Amazon. There we go. So we've got three long calls. Um, Disney was a swing target. Amazon was a one ATR target. And Micron, we ended up doing a one um, ATR target on as well. And then if you, you know, haven't had enough practice for today, you could come over here and look at, at Google. And it too is hitting a, a new high. And so, you know, you could go through that same thought process. Again, there isn't something for it to swing up to, but could you consider a flag target or a one ATR target? And the answer is you could do either one. So, you know, if we have a minute or two here, just let me look and make sure. You guys have been quiet today. I mean, usually there's so many questions. You're a, a group of seasoned veterans, are you? Let's just replicate um, our Micron trade over here in the other account. So we're going to come in here to Micron. And again, we're buying a single, single order, first tr trigger sequence, repetition being the mother of all learning, right? Market, good till canceled, sprocket. And our target at 132.07 and our exit. And then tomorrow at the end of the trading day, if it has not gone up and hit the target, um, then we will adjust the stop. So we will do that in, in Monday's um, trading a smaller account class just to show ongoing trade management. Um, on in tomorrow's class, we might talk about verticals, um, but in this class, we you know somebody's asking a question about long call verticals and and short short put verticals, and um, yeah, we talked we talked about that in a class earlier this week when you might want to do one versus the other. I think it was trading breakouts. For some reason, this doesn't want to hold. Okay, 11701. Um, but this class we really limit to talking about long options. Yeah. So as much as I'd love to talk about that, that's beyond the scope of this class. Okay, so 132, 117. We're in the right account. Confirm and send. How much could we lose? $530. Do we intend to lose $530? No. 
But is it possible? Yes. And that's why we're position sizing the way we are. It's just a more conservative approach to position sizing. And so, you know, if you buy two contracts saying, well, I'd for sure get out before I've lost 50%, um, you know, well, there's no for sure, is there? What if it gapped down? So um, that's why we position size the way we do. Okay. So my friends, that um, that is that for today. Um, we've placed our, did this one go in? We've placed our trades and um, here's my ask at the end of the class. So what I'm going to ask of you is that you one hit the like button. Um, it lets people know that you found this content valuable. It lets Cameron and I know you found this valuable. So that that's appreciated. But more importantly, it moves this up in the in the YouTube algorithm so that more people can find this content. So hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. And and by doing that, then it's easy to find this. It's easy to find cl um, classes in the archives. So you'll want to hit the subscribe. And then last but not least, you want to make sure that you're following Cameron and I in the land of X, uh, Barb Armstrong CS and Cameron May CS for Charles Schwab. So that's a wrap for today, my friends. Thank you for hanging with me. Um, I will see you tomorrow in um, trading a smaller account at high noon. And coming up next, Cameron, can you help me with that? I don't normally teach this class. Oh, it's getting to know Schwab. Um, and you know what, guys? If you have not participated in that and you're not an expert on the Schwab.com platform, man, there is a ton of fantastic stuff there. And I'm going to be riding shotgun in the chat. And so I'm looking forward to being there. I hope to see you there. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.